They always say, write what you know. I think you should write what you fear. And with the walk, January 17, 1994, LA was hit with this massive earthquake, 6.7 on the Richter scale, and our house was absolutely destroyed. We came out of it uninjured, but our house was red tagged. We had to rebuild. Around the same time, I was doing a TV series, and we were shooting in the worst part of downtown Los Angeles. And I'm down there on the set, and I'm thinking, God, I hope the big one doesn't hit right now. Because what the hell would I do? I'd have to walk all the way home from this hellhole back to the San Fernando Valley. Hey, <laughs> there's a story. That's not bad. What if a guy is stuck in downtown Los Angeles, a guy like me, in the television business, and has to get back home to his gated community in the San Fernando Valley. My hero, if you can call him that, is Marty Slack, a television network executive who's on the set of a very bad pilot, sample episode of a proposed series down in downtown Los Angeles when the big one hits. He thinks, OK, I'll just put on my, my backpack from the trunk with my earthquake kit, and I'll just walk home. It'll be no problem at all. Well, it's, it's a huge problem, um, because he's saddled not just with the after effects of this massive earthquake, but his own flawed personality. The real obstacles between him and getting home are not the disasters in front of him, but the obstacles within himself, all his own problems, all his own hang-ups, all his own preconceptions about who he is and what he's going to face in an earthquake. So before he can rescue himself, before he can rescue his wife, before he can get home, he has to solve the disaster that is Marty Slack. And because Marty's in the TV business, he's really good at fooling himself and fooling others. He's in the fooling people business. That's what TV is. And he, he buys into his own fake mythology. He, he buys into the lies he's told on television and the lies he's told himself. So when he thinks he's prepared and he thinks he knows what the world's going to be like, it's not that way. Also because he's in television, he's used to being a pretty good liar. I wouldn't say lying. He's used to, to stretching reality to suit his needs. And to framing reality, too. He's used to giving notes on scripts and notes on TV shows and, and packaging reality. And he's trying, in a sense, as he's walking through this earthquake, to package it, to, to have it fit his preconceived notions of how this story should play out. Well, life doesn't play out like a story in a scripted television drama. So he's had to change the way he thinks. And he gets a lot of the resources he needs for coming to grips with the disaster around him from re-examining himself and his relationship with his wife and his own past. What sets the walk apart from all these other disaster novels and disaster movies is I'm bringing it down to a human level. One guy walking home, a ground view. He's not Charlton Heston. He's not Tommy Lee Jones. He's not an action hero. He's a normal guy. He doesn't have super survival skills. Um, the, the disasters and, and challenges he faces are the kind that you or I or anybody else stuck in an earthquake would face.